Hi, I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and today we have something very special in the office. We have something from Scarhoy on loan called a PTZ Pro, and it's a new product from Scarhoy which is strictly targeted at PTZ controlling. This is the unit here, and we've played around with it a little bit, and we've been using it to control a PTZ optics camera. Uh, it controls a variety of different kinds of cameras, but this is the uh, unit that we have here in the office, and uh, we're going to go through what it can do, what it's, what's special about it, and a little bit more technical on the side of actually how you configure it and how you set it up. And the reason why we're going to go so technical here is because I think that in order to really understand the value that the Scarhoy products um, offer is to see how truly configurable each control surface is. When I say this is a PTZ controller, that's what the controls have been designed for. It's got a joystick on it, it's got an area for presets, it's got a number of uh, buttons to select cameras on, but more importantly, it can interface with any of the Scarhoy cores the way that all of the other Scarhoy control surfaces do. And I don't think that we've really gotten into how that really works because the way that you can configure each one of these control surfaces is extremely granular. And I think you'll see that a little bit later in the tutorial. So with that, let's get into what exactly the control surface does and how to configure it. So today we're gonna to enlist the help of VMEX, which is going to be showing the um, control surface on the right-hand monitor and then the output of the PTZ camera that we're gonna control on the left-hand monitor. So as I walk you through this, you'll be able to see that I'm controlling the joystick and that the PTZ camera is moving on the left. And we'll be using VMIX a little later to showcase just how awesome the control surface is as well. So to start with, um, the control surface itself is broken up into several areas. Uh, there's a set of encoders across the top here. These are dials, and these dials are controlled by this menu block here. And the menu block controls things like exposure. I can set exposure from uh, automatic to manual. Uh, white balance, I can again control whether it's indoor or outdoor. Um, color, I can dial up the luminance so I can adjust the brightness. Um, image, I can change the sharpness. I don't know how well this will come across in an encode, but in the left hand image, you'll see it's really sharp and, and uh, crispy now. And then there are four other uh, areas um, which can be programmed for different uh, different controls that we'll get into a little bit later when we take a look in the uh, Scarhoy core section. Uh, this fifth dial here, this is for um, focus. So if I start to turn it, you can see that my PTZ's image is coming in and out of focus. And then this next block down here, this is for presets. And I've created three presets. One is a shot of me. Two is a shot of the switchblade that's far down the other end of the table, a real tight zoom. And then number three here, this is the shot of the control surface. And if I wanted to create a fourth preset, all I would do is take the joystick, I'm gonna push it up, bit up a little and then I'm going to hold down number four here until it turns green it turns green that means the preset is set very easy so I can go back to three and we'll go down to my control surface four up to me again and if I want to create another preset again hold down five until it's green four three five you can make those presets pretty quickly so that's the preset select area. Uh, the joystick is pretty self-evident. It's got pan, tilt, and zoom. It's got a little button on top as well. These can be set uh, to do different things, uh, as we'll get into later. And then across the bottom, let me get back to my control surface. Across the bottom is a list of camera buttons. So this is meant to uh, be able to control up to eight different cameras. In this case, we only have one camera, so we're gonna use these uh, buttons to do other things, which we'll get into uh, shortly here. So that is the control surface, the overall controls. Now let's get into exactly how this is set up uh, and how to configure it. 
to explain a little bit about how the unit is um, connecting to the cameras, there's a Ethernet cable on the back here, which connects off to a hub, which this is how it communicates with all Ethernet devices. There's a power port over here. Um, some units have optional PoE. And then there's this USB connector, and that's just for firmware updating, and that's what we're going to talk about right now, which is how to configure and update a Starhoy control surface and really, uh, really get into the power of the unit. So to do that, you can go to the Scarhoy website and you can download the firmware updater. So the firmware updater is this guy here. And in order for me to make changes to it, I'm going to click online configuration. And it's going to bring up this uh, website, cores.scarhoy.com, with a long string of numbers and letters, which is basically our unit. And this is the, con the interface for configuring the control surface. And you can see it's got a sort of virtual version of the unit here on the, on the screen. And if I want to make changes to, for example, how the encoder knob works. So this is what the encoder knob does when the um, uh, ex exposure menu is chosen. And this is the white balance menu, the color menu, the image menu, and the four other menu options that are uh, configurable. All of these are configurable by the user, but these are meant to be user um, versions. And then uh, down here is the IP settings. So the IP of the unit here is uh, 192.168.1.176. I set that here because that's uh, copacetic with my network settings. And then the um, camera that it's controlling is this one here at dot .121. And in order to kind of give you a, a basic explanation, I'm going to move my presets down to these three buttons here. I'm going to move uh, three of my presets over. So because I only have one camera, I only need to have this one camera select button. So I'm going to make these three buttons my presets. And to do that, I'm going to select this preset, and it'll show you um, this is what happens when you bring up uh, when you click on that preset. So what's it doing? It's doing PTZ Optics PT20X preset. Just to scroll through some of these. Um, focus, zoom, gain, uh, brightness, white balance, saturation, um, camera select. These are some of the different options that you can configure a button for in, um, in, in the course section. So I'm going to copy this. This little CP button means copy. I'm going to click CP. I'm going to click Cam 2, and I'm going to click Insert, which is going to overwrite what it's currently set for, which is Camera Select setting. Uh, this one's to select Camera 2, and I don't need that, so I'm going to click Insert. And now it's set to PTZ Optics Preset 20, um, Preset 1. And I'm going to do the same for this. Copy, Insert, Preset 3, Copy, Insert. So I've just created these three buttons as my preset buttons, which they're bigger and they're easier to get to if I'm lazy. I can now just have those three presets for my one camera and I'm handy. So in order to implement this, we need to go down here and click Save Settings. So I'm going to click Save Settings. Scarhoy's website will then say Save Configuration. So we've updated the configuration on the website, but that's not the last step. The next step that we need to go to is we go back to the firmware updater and click check for updates and it's saying the firmware upgrade uh, file is being generated on the server so it's taking this information that we just sent here and it's turning it into a firmware file and that's going to take a few minutes so we're going to fast forward to where it's been uh, generated downloaded and installed so now that we've downloaded that and installed it we can see that the three buttons over here now, uh, they're slightly different uh, brightness because they actually, they're, they're programmed to be presets now. And in order to set them, I'm going to start out by setting preset one. I'm going to hold it down until it turns a slightly brighter green. And now I'm going to set preset two. And I'm just going to set preset three to be something over here. And now if I press 1, 
we go to preset one, preset two, preset three. So we've just moved the presets from this area over here because that's what you wanted to do. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about cores. To discuss cores, we're going to go back to their website. And on the left here where it says device cores, I'm going to click it. And what's currently loaded is the PTZ Optics PT20. And if I want to add another device, it's going to give me a long list of different cores. So just among the PTZ cameras, we have Ada, uh, the AJA RoboCam, um, Generic Visca, Lumens, NewTek, Panasonic, a bunch of different Sony options. And then there's all kinds of other different cores available. But in this case, we're going for vMix. And I'm going to click Save Settings and go back to my controller configuration. And when I go into the controller, now instead of just having the PTZ Optics options, I now have vMix options. So when I scroll down here, you can see uh, there's a bunch of new options there. So for this setup, what I'm going to do is I want to make these uh, three buttons, two of these three buttons to be punch buttons for my uh, PTZ cameras. So I can make this one PTZ controller also act as a switcher, uh, just a few buttons of it, whatever is necessary. So I'm going to make this button an active source of input one, and then I'm going to make this an active source of input two. And then this last one, I'm going to make it be a fade. And I do need to go down here and I need to tell the control surface what my IP address is for the computer that's running vMix on it. So I'm going to click Save Settings. Save the configuration is saved. Check for updates. Now that we've installed the new firmware, there's one last step that we need to do is we need to run vMix Bridge. And vMix Bridge is an application that can be downloaded from the ScarHoy website, and we can set it so that it starts on startup. But when we run it, it should immediately reach out to the control surface, and the control surface says, oh, new connection from 192.168.1.176, which is the control surface um, that we're using here. And if I press different buttons, I'm able to change to different inputs. And if I want to fade between the two of them, I can use this button now. So this one control surface has now been set up to create presets and be able to bring up different inputs in vMix. So we've turned this PTZ controller into a hybrid vMix slash PTZ optics controller, or we could do it the other way around uh, with another controller. So there's a lot of value in the way that the ScarHoy controllers are so flexible that they can control all different kinds of equipment. You can think of uh, and uh, one of these control surfaces controlling some Sony PTZ cameras and an, an ATEM switcher. Um, the, the list goes on and on because there are so many different pieces of equipment that the ScarHoy uh, cores cover that it allows you to do all kinds of different things, all within one control surface from one manufacturer. I hope going through the process of configuring the control surface uh, and how it works on the website and the complete flexibility that the ScarHoy core scenario allows has helped explain uh, some of the value that the control surfaces offer and just the, the amazing quality of the unit itself, but the care and thought that goes into how to make this one unit control almost any different kind of Ethernet controllable device. Um, they're really impressive units. I think um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of them. And if you have any questions about them, please feel free to reach out to me at eric at usbroadcast.co. Thanks.